Tuesday night was an amazing night. Didn't it feel good? It was good to feel good after months of endless dreary negativity, failure, incompetence, chaos, crisis, Afghanistan, inflation, supply chain, lockdowns, mandates, lectures, climate, catastrophe. The world's about to end. America's racist. You're racist. Everyone's racist. And honestly, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, however you feel about any of the candidates that ran in Virginia, you can't help but watch this and smile. I'm telling you that what you are looking at is the American dream. The American dream. When my father came to this country, August 11th of 1963, he came at the height of the civil rights movement from Jamaica. He came, and I said to him, but it was such a bad time for us. Why did you come? And he said, because America was where the jobs and the opportunities were. The American dream, yes, that's what I believe in. I know it's what you believe in. It's why I was so proud to become a citizen a few months ago. Wasn't it refreshing to see leaders elected who just love America and are proud to say so? And wasn't it refreshing to see leaders elected who were positive and practical? None of this weird, woke ideology, the moralizing and patronizing and virtue signaling and dividing. The hateful intolerance where those who disagree with you aren't just wrong, they're evil, they're Nazis, they're enemies of the state, domestic terrorists. Remember those sanctimonious signs, love Trump's hate? Well, last week it was Trump voters, plus a good few Biden voters, who trumped the hate coming from the Democrats. And on Tuesday night, we saw why. On day one, we're going to jumpstart our jobs and reinvigorate this economy so it lifts up all Virginians. We're going to get this economy moving again, growing 400,000 new jobs, fostering 10,000 startup businesses. Friends, Virginia will be open for business. As I used to say as we were on the trail, hold on, Virginia. Help is on the way. The cavalry has arrived. There is no time to waste. Our kids can't wait. We work in real people time, not government time. Exactly. That's what people want. Positive, practical policy, not mean-spirited, ideological dogma. Real solutions to real-life problems. That's what people voted for. And by the way, that's what people voted for in 2016, too. A problem-solving business guy offering practical plans. That's the lesson from last week for Republicans in 2022 and 24. Be positive. Focus on what you're going to do specifically to help people in the future. Do it with a smile on your face positive and practical. It may sound trite, but it's a deep truth about how you win elections. Amazingly, the Democrats seem to have learned the exact opposite lesson from last week's results. They're doubling down on hate and division. This was former head of the DNC and failed presidential candidate Howard Dean. Racism still works in Virginia. That's what you got from it. From an election where the black vote for Republicans went up and the black vote for Democrats went down, where according to some exit polls, the GOP actually won a majority of the Latino vote. That's racism. Jameel Hill, this country simply loves white supremacy. White supremacy? Yeah, the white supremacist Republicans who elected the first black woman as lieutenant governor, the first Latino as attorney general. Meanwhile, those great champions of racial justice, the Democrats, managed to lose black delegates representing black districts. The left's knee-jerk racial demagoguery is incredibly corrosive of our social fabric. Just listen to how they talk. This is about the fact that a good chunk of voters out there are okay with white supremacy. Let's call a thing a thing. Actually, scratch that. They are more than okay. This isn't a party that's just another political party that disagrees with us on tax policy. That at this point, they're dangerous. They're dangerous to our national security because stoking that kind of soft oh, yeah. white nationalism yeah. 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 eventually leads to the hardcore stuff. That MSNBC host who, let's remember, has a history of vicious bigotry and homophobia, knows all about hardcore racism. She provides a platform for it on her show. He was one of her guests talking about Winsome Sears, immigrant, ex-Marine, black Republican woman. 
there is a black mouth moving, but a white idea through the running on the runway of the tongue of a figure who justifies and legitimates uh, the white supremacist practices. Have you ever heard anything so disgusting, so divisive, so fundamentally at odds with everything America stands for? And if Democrats aren't calling everyone who doesn't vote for them racist, well, they're just dumb and gullible. Here's former Clinton campaign spokesperson Jennifer Palmieri trotting out the deplorable smear because, you know, it worked so well the last time. Things like CRT, those things take hold in, uh, with voters in the face of inaction, when there is dysfunction, right? And, and that is when people can fall prey to, you know, like sort of race-based um, arguments like that. Oh, they fall prey to race-based arguments, do they? Those dumb Republican rubes. Race-based arguments, that's the entire Democrat playbook, as Biden himself put it. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. It's also revolting, the Democrats' demented and despicable strategy of racializing everything. One of the few willing to reflect honestly on all this was Bill Clinton's former strategist, James Carville. Looking at these results, uh, your party, uh, what went wrong? What went wrong was just stupid wokeness. Defund the police, lunacy to take Abraham Lincoln's name off of schools. Some of these people need to go to a woke detox center. Yeah, not just some of them, all of them, because they are poisoning our society. Look at the crazed, self-righteous zeal of these ideologues as they turn legitimate political disagreement into hostility and harassment, hounding Kirsten Cinema in a bathroom stall, holding up Joe Manchin in a parking garage. I mean, what is this? Who behaves like this? Normal, decent people don't. But this is who the Democrats seem to have become. They never stop going on about Trump's divisiveness and inhumanity. Well, on this, as on everything else, they are guilty of the exact same thing they accuse everyone else of. The Democrats have become the party of hate and division. And last week's election was a massive repudiation of everything they now stand for. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.